So what is continuous glucose monitoring and how is SmartGuard different? So you can see from this slide here that the green dots represent the finger sticks and then the blue line represents the continuous glucose monitoring. So your finger sticks give you a snapshot of what your blood glucose is there and then, whereas the sensor glucose, which is not actually measuring it from your blood but from your fat tissue, which is very similar, and level it gives an update every five minutes so you could see if you just had the finger sticks alone here you would think the glucose is well controlled but the continuous glucose monitoring reveals high pos between 3 and 6 a.m and then again at 9 p.m and maybe another one at 12 and 3 so it provides extra information you can see from the next slide just a really quick explanation here when you do your finger stick you actually measure the glucose represented by the blue blue G's, they come up from the, the blood and you measure that. Whereas you can see the sensor is actually sat in the fat tissue and that's measuring the glucose that's in your fat tissue. Now, the glucose that's in your blood takes about five to 10 minutes to go out and be at the same level that's in your fat tissue. So although the measurements will never be identical, um, it'll always be about five to 10 minutes behind the sensor readings, but they, they should be very similar. So where can it be useful? So you can see about this slide here, you can actually, most um, continuous glucose monitoring systems will have the ability to be able to set um, threshold alerts or alerts where you hit a high level, in this case 13.9, you'll get an alarm. And at this level here at 3.9, you'll get an alert. So you can actually get those alerts. So you can see this person would have one, two, three, four, five, six extra alarms per day. So obviously that's a lot of more information, which sometimes can become a bit overburdening, but, but there it is. You can see from this slide though that some people don't want, want to be told before they get to 3.9. So you can see here the low predictive alerts. When the blue line is going down and going down quickly, the continuous glucose monitoring systems can predict that it's going to hit that low level and alarm before so that action can be taken, such as having a biscuit or some glucose tablets or maybe consider a temporary basal rate. But if you can imagine having all the low alerts plus the low predictive alerts, this could mean that you're beeping or buzzing sort of 10, 15 times a day, which for me, it's useful because I can prevent the lows, but becomes a bit tiresome when you're getting 15 reminders that you've got diabetes per day. And if you can see a few of these are through the night as well, that can become a little bit frustrating. On the Medtronic VO is the only one at the moment that actually stops the insulin if the glucose level goes too low. So you can see on this slide here, um, at two o'clock in the morning, the predictive alert went off but was missed. And this is actually mine um, because I was asleep and um, didn't wake up with the alarm. And then the low alert went off at about 4.5. I still didn't wake up. And you can see the low glucose suspend actually kicked in there um, at about three o'clock in the morning. Um, and stopped me going continually low although I still went a little bit low because it's set at um, 3.9 and then it rose and you can see that the with the red line on the bottom where the basal insulin was that actually got stopped for two hours which allowed the, the sensor level to rise back up which is brilliant because it prevented it a severe hypo but you can see what happened by the morning I actually rose up to 15 because it is suspended for two hours if it would have kicked back in maybe after an hour or so then that would have hopefully prevented the, the high on the other side but I didn't wake up with those alarms but you can see there was one two three four five six alarms through that night there which again can become um, a little bit tiresome so how might smart guard be different so you can see from this slide here if previously the the low glucose suspend was say set at 3.4, where the blue line goes down, you would only get the insulin suspended at around half past two in the morning, and you'd have already been low at 3.4, which might have been a little bit too late. So how the smart guide is going to work is actually you can see that the insulin is going to be suspended at a much earlier level when it's predicted or before you actually go low. So you can see that the insulin is there stopped at about 1.30 in the morning to stop the glucose level going down too low. And then rather than my previous example, actually you can see now at just after maybe 3 o'clock, so it's been suspended for maybe just over maybe not quite the full two hours, but actually it's going to resume automatically um, to prevent um, the level going too high afterwards. And the beauty of this is, whereas before with the, the VAO and other CGM systems, you're going to be getting alarms telling you that you're predicted to go low and when you hit the low level, this is going to work without 
actually making an alarm. So if this was at night, this would stop the insulin and restart the insulin without any alert so that when you wake up in the morning, you can check back and see that it's happened, but means you can get a good night's sleep. So that's the simple.